Because I want to talk about this this first issue, and I think you might want to weigh in. I want to start by discussing the D's today, the Democrats in Oregon, who pretty much call the shots, right? And this conversation that I had recently with Senate President Peter Courtney that I honestly was not prepared for. I mean, I was I was prepared for it, but I guess I just wasn't prepared for for where it went. Let me explain. So he reached out to us and wanted to talk about the end of the session and how that all went, which is a pretty standard thing. And I figured that we'd chat about it for about 20 minutes. But the conversation took a turn and it felt less like an interview at some points and more like a, I, I don't know, really, you be the judge. I'll start with this, this first bit that kind of floored me when, again, the Senate president of the Democratic Party that has a near supermajority to do almost anything they want in this state told his son, who lives out of state, that he wouldn't want him moving here. I think what you want from me is to tell you it's going to be all right, especially because of your two sons. Well, I just visited one of my sons in Hella, Montana, and he has three grandchildren. My wife and I went back, and I'm looking at you know, Emmy, I'm looking at Zaley, I'm looking at Noah. And, you know, I'm wondering, I told him don't leave Montana because I have this view that it's more simple there. I just feel like, I mean, what a thing to say that someone who has dedicated most of their life to the betterment of this state has told your son who's in Montana that you wouldn't want him moving here. That has to be a sad realization for you. Well, Oregon's not what it was when I moved here in 81, uh, 1969. Oregon was a much different place than it is today. And I think you, you, I, if, if, you, if you could say, you, that's not a, a poor statement I made. You have no idea Salem where it was then, where it is now. Portland was probably one of the, I always said, given its size, there's no city comparable to Portland, Oregon. It's the greatest city in the world in terms of its size, comparably. There's never been a city. Tremendously good decisions were made by former city councils and mayors. Its location is extraordinary. I don't think Dan could say, I don't know how long Dan and his wife and his children have been here, but I'm not sure that he could say it's the same thing today as it was when you moved here. I can't, I don't think you can say that. And that's, that makes me sad. Not exactly a ringing endorsement. Now look, we just finished a session and that is really tough work. And it, it's been a, a tough year to say the least. But I will say this, I, I, I do talk to people and I've heard from several people in the political world, connected and elected, that the atmosphere in Salem was and is toxic. And in their opinion, most of them, telling me it's never really seemed as bad as it is right now. They say people simply just don't like each other and in many cases will not work together. The value of compromise is no longer considered valuable. The value of working, of understanding that you cannot be a public official if you do not have the ability to talk and work with and painfully compromise with someone who thinks very differently than you. That is no longer considered a value. It's nice on your programs. You, you say it all the time, working together. But the fact is, that is not rewarded. Now. That is not rewarded. I know what I'm talking about. Now, you, you might be saying, look, yeah, I know, Dan, that's politics, man. Why does that really matter, this reluctance to compromise? It's always been around. Well, because when the problem is like this, like what we're experiencing here, it only really compounds, for instance, maybe with redistricting. See, lawmakers will redraw the district line soon, and they will add a new congressional district. Now, it's, it's a little complicated. I know it's boring political stuff, but it is a huge deal in terms of representation. A lot of Republicans, for instance, they think that the maps have been drawn unfairly over the years and that the way that those maps are drawn have given Democrats more power than they deserve. Now, I can't say if that's true or not, but Democrats certainly do have most of the power. For instance, Democrat Peter Courtney, who just got to pick the Senate, the people in the Senate who will redraw the map. And while he could have made that committee an even split of Democrats and Republicans, he chose to stack the deck with Dems. Why didn't you make it equal on both sides? That's a very good question. And the truth of the matter is, I simply looked at the cards and the question is, the numbers were such on my side, Democrat, Republicans, 
was concerned that if I made it equal, the Democrats would dig in over here and decide not to play. And I'll be honest, I made a partisan decision there, and I second-guess myself even to this day because it was in my nature to do that, but I didn't do it. And I thought basically the deeds that we had today were such that they would not be able, they wouldn't accept that. And so they'd start out in a very defensive position saying, well, we're going to go to the secretary of state or something. So going to the secretary of state, what that means is, you know, the secretary of state is a Democrat and she would be given the job of redrawing the lines if lawmakers can't come to an agreement. And while our secretary of state, Shamia Fagan, has vowed to be bipartisan if the mapping goes to her, Democrats would certainly be more comfortable with that outcome than Republicans. But what else did you hear him say there? I heard the Democrats, or as he put it, the D's we have today, are so partisan that simply creating an equal playing field would have created a stalemate because they would have refused to compromise with Republicans. Listen, I'll say it again. Democrats in Oregon are close to a supermajority. They have almost all of the power. And according to the man that they put in charge, Peter Courtney, the D's today can't be trusted by him to compromise on an issue like redistricting that is inherently a bipartisan issue. And then Democrats seem confused and up in arms when Republicans use those extreme tactics like a walkout. Everyone is shocked. I'm on TV going, oh, can you believe it? Now, I'm not saying I agree or disagree with that tactic, but I'm certainly going to stop acting so stunned that they're doing it. Tell me what you think. Maybe you disagree. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this interview. Peter Courtney, uh, Peter Courtney also had some opinions of the media, of this show. If you're interested, maybe we can get into that tomorrow or a little, a little later in the week. Uh, we'd like to know. Weigh in. Tell us, tell us what you think. Email us at the story at kgw.com or use Twitter in the hashtag HeyDan.